Hi everyone, Kim here with Art Classes for Kids and I'm here today with Lily. And this is our very first ever live stream art class and I'm so glad you're here to join us. So today we are going to do a drawing project and the supplies we're going to need are some chalk pastels, some dark paper, and masking tape. But if you don't have that, that is not a worry because you can still make it. You can use regular white paper and you can use uh, crayons or you can use magic markers, whatever it takes and you can still make a colorful masterpiece. So let's tell them a little bit about uh, what who this artist is. Some of you might already know. I don't know. Um, today's project is inspired by this work of art right here. This is a printout of a famous, famous painting called The Van Gogh Sunflowers. Sunflowers. So it's inspired by Vincent Van Gogh. And Vincent Van Gogh was a post-impressionist. Do you know what that is? Maybe, maybe not. If you don't, let me tell you a little bit. So uh, a post-impressionist is somebody who was doing the style after the Impressionists. But what are the Impressionists? Well, the Impressionists are like uh, uh, Renoir and Manet and Monet, and those people made their paintings with dots and dashes and used really light colors. And they didn't look like a photograph unless you looked at them from really far away. So he was similar to that he made them with dashes, but his dashes were bolder, his paint was thicker, and his colors were a lot brighter. And uh, we love his art now, but at the time, people didn't understand it. And they thought it was weird and they didn't want to buy his art. But later, they bought his art and they paid a lot of money for it. So decades later, this same painting, this sunflower painting, sold for like $40 million. And he never was rich when he was, uh, you know, making his art. And he made his art in uh, uh, most of his art around the 1880s, which is, uh, God, how long ago was that? That was about uh, 140 years, I think. Yeah, so that was a little while back when things were a little different. And he was from the Netherlands, but he did some art in, in Paris. He did some art in Holland. He he did he lived in a couple of different places. And we're going to do this art now. So I'm wondering if you've gathered up all your supplies that you need. If you have and you're getting ready, if you happen to have masking tape, what I do is, here's an example of one that's finished from my, one of my art classes is that I put tape around the edges so that when I peel it off, it looks like it's got a little black border, like a, a black frame. And so I'm gonna teach you how to do that. Let me move this over a little bit. So you take some tape. I like to use this blue tape because it's less stickier than the tan tape. And what you do is you put it across and you line it up with the edge of your paper, just like this. And then you rip off the end. You do it on all four sides and it makes when you know it makes the illusion that it's got a really clean edge after you've used a messy material like chalk pastel. So, but I also use this taping technique with watercolors, oil pastels, all kinds of different things. So, if you're ready, we'll give you a minute and put that down, and then we have our paper is prepared and ready to go. We're gonna take this step by step. So uh, we'll try not to go too fast, but we're gonna make it so easy for you to make a masterpiece like this. So I hope you're ready to go. So I'm gonna take this board or this paper and I have it on a board so that I can hold it up easier for you. Lily's gonna do hers on the table like you're probably doing yours at home. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create the composition. So what's a composition? Well, I'm going to tell you, the composition is sort of like the placement of the objects or the placement of the shapes within this area that you're working in, okay? So we're going to draw all the parts, and then we're going to go back in and color. So we need one color to draw the parts. We're going to pick a neutral or light color. We're going to pick orange, okay? So we've each got an orange. And then we're going to start with the vase. We're gonna start with the bottom of the vase first. So go to the center of the bottom of your paper and go up like one to two fingers. If your chalk is dirty, you can just do that. You're gonna make a smile curve about two inches right at the bottom to get it started. Oops. 
Okay, now you're going to make the two sides of the vase. And the sides are kind of like two curves, like a C and a backward C, or like two parentheses, things you put around uh, words in, in the middle of a sentence. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna curve on the right inward, and you're gonna curve on the left. You're going about halfway up your paper. Don't go any higher than halfway up. And then you're going to make a smile curve right in the center, right here. You're not even going to close up the top. And the reason is because you're going to have flowers that overlap on top of it. So now we've got the bottom of our vase. You've got yours looking good. Now just below that line on the vase, I want you to make a little mark and go directly across to the side of the tape or to the side of the paper, and that is gonna be the edge of your table. So you're gonna take that across, they're gonna do it again over here. Now that is a straight horizontal line, as straight as you can be, but remember, you don't have to try to be perfect. Van Gogh's style was loose and a little bit messy. And that's what we're trying to achieve, okay? So here we go. Now we are going to draw all the different shapes. Let me hold this up right in front. So now we've got this. We've got all the different flowers. Some of the flowers are round like a ball, and some have all the petals and they're spiky. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw the biggest ones first, and then we're going to draw the ones that are spiky second. So we're going to put this over here. And the first, whoops. And the first thing I want you to do is right here, I want you to make a circle about the size of a miniature bagel with a hole in it. So it looks right like a little bit. Yeah, right there, right above the top. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one that looks like it's peeking. Okay, you ready? Okay, now we're gonna do one that looks like it's peeking behind it, and it's just like right here, and it touches the edge of your base. If you want to, you could make it look like it has a little center that you only see part of. There. Great. Okay, then on the right, we're gonna make the shape of a bagel again, but we're going to make it look like instead of it being flat, like it's tilting. So this one's going to be an oval right here like that. And then its center is also going to be an oval. All righty. Now we have two of them that are going off of the right side. So you're not even going to see the centers. They're going to just look like ovals that are a little bit smaller. And you can have another one over here. This one I'm going to make a little bigger. The great thing I love about chalk pastels is that you can rub them and change them if you need to. Looking good, Lily. Give me one more. Okay, we're looking great. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a sideways drooping flower like we have on the left and um, and we're gonna go like this. We're gonna just go off the side, make a little stem and then make an oval. And now you're gonna add little spikes going down. Nice. Now we're going to add the center of all the spiky flowers. So those are going to be a little more spread apart. I want you to pick where you want them. And you can have about, I'm going to have you pick six of them. So you can just go one. These look like the center of this bagel shape. You're going to go one, two, three, four, two could be close, five, six. Pick them anywhere you want. But they're above the other flowers. How many? Six. Since this is our first video, we are learning how to do this. I'm wondering, while you're doing that, 
if we should have background music. Now, I'm going to leave that up to you to leave in the comments, okay? <laughs> what do you think? Usually we have uh, background music in our videos, on our YouTube videos, but this is new, so we'll check into that later. Okay, so now that you have those, each one of these is going to have zigzag points, but instead of just being straight points like this, you can have them curve a little like that. They look like little suns, Ooh. little sunshine uh, any suns. Flower that you want? Yeah, start, start it up. So now you're going to go to each one and make these zigzags. So how you do that is you go out and right next to it, you come back in. Do that to all of them. And go. All right. So make sure that they're nice and pointed on the end. Is it okay if the flower petals overlap? Yep. You can overlap one flower petal over flower petals to another flower, which is fine, like I just did right there. And make sure they're big enough. You want to have some bold flowers. You don't want them too small. Hey, that was great. Now, wherever you have space, we're going to add a couple of special flowers, okay? That, now, I have a little bit of space right here. So maybe I'm going to have a sideways flower. So a sideways flower is where I'm going to have an oval, and I'm going to have the spikes only on one side. So I'm not going to go all the way around. And that looks like it's coming from behind here. So once again, the sideways flower that's facing sideways instead of front, it's only going to have the spiky petals on one side. Okay, now give that, um, give that a stem. Okay. Now, if you feel like you've filled up your, your area with a lot of flowers, then you're good to go. The only thing you want to add now in your composition are stems. So you want to look at a flower and think, oh, if there was a stem going into the vase, where would it go before it bumps into another flower? And then you just add a stem. You might not even see them that much. You can see yours good because you have a little space. That looks good, Lily. All right, so now we're ready to take a break from this first color that we just did our whole composition with. Next is the fun part. Next, we're gonna decide what color all of our flowers and leaves are gonna be. So what I want you to do is decide, do you wanna have yellow sunflowers? Or like my example here, do you wanna have pink and orange and red sunflowers? Because it's your choice, because you're the artist. You're making those decisions, right? And uh, we don't want it to look exactly like the original. We want it to just be inspired by. So make it your own, okay? So what I want you to do first is um, color the vase in. You get to pick two colors. On this one, I picked blue and yellow. On the original one, it's tan and yellow. So you can have any colors you want. I'm going to go with some bright colors. I'm going to go with pink for half of mine. And I'm just going to fill it in. Okay, like that. Do and if you want to rub it in with your finger, you can always do a little bit of blend. I'm going to do this dark purple blue. Okay. And I'll put my colors back after, so in case Lily really wants to use it. This light pink. Oh, I like that color. Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to pick blue because I know I'm probably not going to have blue flowers today, so I'm going to do Ooh, the top part of my base color. Blue. Oh, yeah, cool. While you're working, it's best to not blow the chalk dust. Oh. Yeah, if you tap it, it'll end up down on the table. If you blow it, it could end up all over the house or in someone's eyes. And once it gets past this table, it might end up on the floor. And once it's on the floor, somebody's gonna step on it. And once you step on it, it everywhere your shoe goes, so does that chalk. So anyway, tap it down is a, is a good habit to get into. Going ahead and filling in. Hopefully you picked a super awesome color. 
And if you'd like, you can always blend it with your finger. Hope you guys are thinking this is pretty easy. I think it's pretty easy. Just going step by step, breaking it down, simple shapes. Okay. Looking Can't good. My bottom. Okay. Now Lily's doing her bottom, which she chose this kind of <laughs> fluorescent pink. <coughs> oh, excuse you. Thanks. Okay. Now, while she's doing that, and if you're already done, you're already thinking, what could be my color of my flowers? Now, I would pick two colors so that all the flowers aren't the exact same color. So pick colors that you like to see flowers in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do orange and yellow since this one over here is, you know, more reds and warmer colors. So I'm going to take yellow and I'm going to take orange and I'm going to do my flowers. Now, my round kind of bagel shaped palm flowers are going to be orange. So I'm going to do one. Okay, we've got one done. All you got to do is color it in and then you can blend it a little. We'll be adding shading and highlights later. Okay. Mine is a bit transparent, so I might Ooh, have to Ooh, the fluorescent go. colors, sometimes they get a little I might have to go over it a little bit. Okay. Well, if you rub it, sometimes it rubs off some of the color. So you don't have to rub it if you want them really bright. Yeah, I want it really bright. Oh, you do? Okay. <laughs> Okay, that looks great. Just tap it out, but then don't rub it this time. and see if it stays yeah, bright. Yeah, rub. Okay, you're good. That's good. Okay, so pick your flower colors, and let's take these. Find a slot. Put it back. Okay, so pick two flower colors. Is your flower colors orange and yellow? Yeah. Oh, okay. why? Was that what you were thinking? No. Just wondering. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So while she's picking these, I just want to let you guys know, we not only have YouTube videos, we have like 26 YouTube videos you can check out and do projects for already. 27. Oh, okay. We also post one minute videos on Pinterest that are really simple and easy to follow. Oh, and so, Instagram too. Yeah. So check them all out. Okay. You got a color? I can't grab Here. this one out. If you can't grab it, sometimes I just take my fingers to the end oh. and do it like that. So that's good. That's true. One color. Okay. And then the other color. Can I also use that yellow? Sure. Okay. You can. You know what? You use this yellow, and I will pick a different color. I will do mine pink and orange. Okay. So let's go at it. First, do all your circular bagel shaped um, flowers. In any color you want. Well, do those all like the same color. Okay. The light color? Whichever color you want. Oh, okay. I gotta like, cause there are petals in the way of some yeah, of so, so I gotta like work my way around the petals. Okay. Yeah, you wanna kinda stay in your shape. It'll help. Then you keep that shape. So whatever technique you have, maybe you fill it in the middle, maybe you inline it and then fill it. Everybody's got their style. You can blend it or you cannot blend it. Looking good, looking good. Okay, so now you just got these three right here. Oh yeah. Go ahead and get yellow on those. All right. If you're waiting at home, start thinking about what other colors you would use in this work of art. What color you would want your table and um, and just have that color ready. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. You got that? Okay. So next we're going to take our second color and do the petals of the spiky flowers with these. Okay. So go ahead and just fill them in. And this time what I want you to do is I want you to go over the lines you drew before so they don't look outlined. And you can even make them pointier at the end by flicking them and bring this a little closer. So what you can do is you have an area and then you just lift it off and then it'll be a little pointier. Okay, so go ahead and fill all those in. This is gonna take a little more time than the circular flowers. You can also go over and overlap. Blend at the very end, so I blend all my petals. You don't have to blend. Don't, don't even worry about blending because we're going to add some shading and highlights, and that will help blend too. Oh, okay. Okay. That's what's coming up. Now, if you get done faster than me or Lily, just hang tight, be patient. We've got a few more steps to go. Okay, now I'm done with mine, oops, except this one. Now, if you think that you're done already and you're just waiting, there's some things you can do if you wanna be a little more advanced, more detailed. Check all these petals and make sure that you went over the outlines. I got a few that I kind of passed up. Then also make them pointy at the end, if you can. Maybe you add a few more petals in between petals. Okay. Looking good, Lily. Got a few more to go. Now we now that school's out for a little while, one thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna be doing um, art classes uh, this week on Monday and Tuesday, so today and tomorrow. We're, next week, we're also gonna do them on Monday and Tuesday. And if we get a lot of feedback and we get a lot of requests, then what we'll do is we'll do them maybe four to five days a week, okay? So the things I really love to hear from our viewers are things like, is this a good time for you? We decided to do it at four o'clock because that's when we usually have our classes are at four o'clock on the West Coast. Um, we also, hmm, what else do we want? We want to know if there's any special projects that you'd really like to do. So if you have any requests, go ahead and uh, comment that to us, or you can always email me at kim at artclassesforkids.com with any comments. And uh, what else? Um, uh, I think that's it. Oh, I know. Oh, and so by next week, we will have a list of the projects that are upcoming, the times, the days, and also the supplies needed. So you'll have plenty of time to either organize your supplies, or if you don't have them and you want to go get some, you can either, you know, see if they have them wherever you shop at. But a lot of stores are closed right now. So what you could do, what I do, is you can um, go to our links and that are connected to amazon.com and you can order them from there. Amazon delivers really quick. So that might be a great way for you to get your supplies. Okay, Lily, you got one more flower to go. Okay. 
Now the next color we're gonna choose is the center of all of our flowers. So you can go with, uh, you know, a color you see in flowers, like green or brown, like Van Gogh did, uh, or you can go with your favorite color, maybe it's purple, you know? So, you know, I think I'm gonna go with purple. So I, I've grabbed a purple. <laughs> so grab a purple. Uh, we I have animals around here, so if you hear a meow in the background, <laughs> That would be cats in our neighborhood coming to visit our cat in the backyard. Okay. So, so I have to grab purple? No, you pick any color okay, you want. So now you're just going to go to the centers. And you're going to fill in all your centers. Ooh, that's a nice teal color. Yeah, and all you have to do is swirl it around and fill it in. This is, this is going to go quick. Okay. Oh, I forgot to do this flower. Oh. Okay, just do zigzag on that one. There you go. Okay, great. So then the flower that's upside down, you can do that, that center color too. Upside down. Got one up here. Got one over here. So far, it's pretty simple. It's like coloring in in a coloring book, but with pastels. But we'll get to some other more details coming up. Okay, looks like Lily's just about got her centers done. And I'm done. I just need to tap it. Okay, oh, that looks great. Okay, now yes. we're going to add one special flower that you see in Van Gogh's uh, famous sunflowers. And it's like a whole bunch of leaves clustered over maybe a bud or something. So I want you to pick a color that you're going to use for stems and your leaves. Okay, I'm gonna use, I'll use some sort of green. Okay, so. I'll do this light green for sure. Okay, I'm gonna do this dark green, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna find an area over here and you're just gonna make a curve shape like that. Uh, back, okay. Like, this is a tricky part, so pay attention. Okay, so you're gonna make like a, uh, off to the side, I'll do one over here. Off to the side, like a little curve with all these uh, looks like green petals, but they're gonna hide under another flower and come through. So it's gonna go like this. So every time like this is a petal coming through. Oh, like you that. You see? Okay, cool. It's kind of hidden in there. Yours is more like teal than a green. Ah, it's okay, I like this color. I know. <laughs> Ooh, this color's nice and vibrant. Okay, I love it. And you can always go to the tips and make them even more skinny by just lifting up at the end. Oh, which reminds me, I forgot one of my centers. So I'm gonna go find my purple again. And then I'm gonna go back here. And I one of my petals goes over that. Okay. Keep going. Give it at least like five spikes. This little thing off to the side. And then what you're going to do is you're going to find those stems that you had hidden behind things and make those green. So maybe I had one here, one here, I have one here. Whoops. I have one over here. Ooh. Great. And then don't forget your flower over here that's drooping off to the side. Oh, I won't forget it. Okay. Doing it right now. Yeah, okay. Put them in there. Now we're going to start adding texture. Texture to our flowers. So what is that? That's like, instead of just being a solid color, we're going to add lines to it. So I'm going to pick a color that's going to show up on orange because I'm going to do my round flowers first. Okay? So you pick a color too. So my color shows up. On, I'm going to use red. Let me see if I can find a red. 
So I've got red. So I'm going to zoom in here. What you're going to do is you're going to make it like a little sun all the way around. Like lines like this. And then you're going to go back around it and do another well, row I'll of those. Do a dark red like that also. And then if you want, you can shade the outside edge. You know, you can add a little bit of outline to it. And then it looks like that. Okay, then you're gonna do that to the others. You're gonna just add all these little lines, like a little sunshine, a couple rows of sunshine. And there you go. I'm gonna do this. So do all your flowers that are round with, with this Ooh. style of texture. And I'm covering my outline a little bit. And you're going to go just little lines kind of quick. So I've got a few more to go. This one, these I don't see the center. So I can just go off to the side, just make them go sideways if I want. Surround them a little. And same with this one. Wait, is that make an outline or something? Mm -hmm. Outline the outside edges. And then that's. Okay. Okay, move your hand. They can see how yours is looking. Yeah, looking good. Keep going. Oh, the other thing you want to avoid is while you're working on it, try not to lay your arm across your painting. Oh, or your painting. Your drawing. While. You're working on it because you might do a lily and smear your green leaves, okay? Which is okay because you can always fix them. But the thing is, is if you rub your arm across it, you might smear it. I'll try to avoid that okay. <laughs> the rest of the time. Okie dokie. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take either that same color or a different color and we're going to put just a bunch of dashes inside each one of the centers of the spiky flowers because those are kind of like the seeds, the sunflower seeds, right? So you're just going to put a bunch of dots and dashes inside these. Okay, I'm going to zoom this in so you can see what I did. So look in the center of the flowers. Okay, so I've got to get every one of these centers. You can even do the ones in the center of the round flowers. Remember, it doesn't have to look like the famous uh, sunflower painting. It just has to look awesome, okay? And if you're adding lots of color and you made a bunch of flowers and you followed the idea of the shapes we did, I'm sure yours is looking great. All righty. So now what we're going to do next is we're going to look for a color to add some shading to the spiky leaf flowers. And though you want a color darker than your leaves. So mine are pink. I need a color a little bit darker than pink. I think I'm just going to have a dark pink. Or I could use brown. Mine are no, red. I'm going to use brown. Mine are like a red. Mine is like a red. What color do you okay. think I should do? We have a visitor outside of our sliding glass door, and it's a neighborhood cat. Just really wants to watch the video, too. Make some kitty art. Okay, ready? What, what color do you think I should do? Mine's I'm in like purple. Red. Or dark brown. I'll do this dark brown. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go maybe onto a couple of sides. You're going to add a few dark outlines or lines to your pointed petals. So just go like this. You can put some lines in there. Oh, to make it like pop yeah, more. Yeah, and the closer it is to the center, you can add some extra lines. So I'm going to zoom in to this flower right here. See those lines I've added? All righty. 
Now you're going to take some time to do that to every skinny petal. You can even do it to the droopy flowers petals. Oh, that looks great, Lily. Okay. I got three more flowers to go. Okay. You can even do those green leaves, the ones that were pointy. You can add some little dashes in the top and then you can add some skinny lines to those. See? The green uh, leaves pop out more because I smudge. Awesome. Most of it. Okay, you have that. Those last two flowers to go. One. This one. Oh, what about the upside down? Oh, I did that one. Okay, so she's on her last flower. I wonder if you guys are on your last flower. Hopefully, you're getting close, right? I'm gonna go ahead and put this color away, and I'm thinking about. I'm going to add a little bit of extra color to the center of a few of my flowers. So I'm going to go and add a dark color again. So on Van Gogh's, you see some of his have like a second color in the center. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to not do that to everyone, but just to a few. So this one here, maybe this one here, this one here. I don't have to do everyone, but if you want to do everyone, that's your choice because you can do everyone if you want. I'll do a dark part. Ooh. Okay. Right in the center. I like the color you chose. That's a good color. Okay, looking good. Okay. Hey, turn yours around, Lily, and show. Lily's is looking good. Okay, so next, what we're going to do is we're going to grab some, some white. So see if you have a white in your set. And then we're going to add a few highlights. So the vase, we want it to look a little shiny. So we're going to go to the very front, and we're going to put some lines going across like this. And they're all in a row. And then you go in the second half, the bottom half, and you do that too. Okay. And don't forget to do both the top and the bottom. And the lines are stacked right above each other. Okay. And then you hit the bottom with that. Ooh. Oh, that's okay. It's blue on it. That's all right. Now, if you want to add a few highlights with white, you can just pick a few spots that you want to add a little bit of white, touch of white to. You don't have to do it all over. Just a few of them might have a little bit of highlights on it. Okay, and then, that was great. Okay, now comes the fun part. Well, it's all fun, but, uh, you get to pick what color you want your tablecloth, okay? Van Gogh's got a tan tablecloth. Right over here, we've got a red tablecloth. So, hmm, what color am I going to have? I kind of like this dark blue. I'm going to use this dark blue. So do the bottom first. I'm going to do this magenta. Okay, and what I want you to do is cover that line that was when you made your composition, that guideline, okay? Cover that. Then go below, right up to the edge of your vase. And then you're going to fill in 
the bottom part, which is the tablecloth on the table. Or maybe you, in this person's image, it's just on a brown or a blue table. You never know. Maybe they don't have a tablecloth. So you're just going to go and just fill it in. Tap out my chalk dust. And if you want to blend it in, you can always blend it in. Okay. I'm going to blend it really quickly. Ooh. Once you've blended that in, you want to pick a color for the wall behind the table. So now I want a color that looks nothing like blue. What color do I want? Maybe I think I'm going with yellow. I'm going to go with bright yellow. Okay. Lily, what color do you think you're going to do your wall? I'm not sure. Okay. Well, once she chooses, she'll get started. But while you guys are waiting, I'm going to show you how you can how to do it best. So you're going to go over that outline, and then you're going to kind of Go right on the edge of every flower petal, just like I'm doing right here. Am I doing this? Like... See, yeah. I'm doing that That's cool. because I don't want to get my wall crossing over any flowers, do I? So I'm gonna go like this, then I'm gonna fill it all in. I'm doing this color, mommy. This green color. Okay, great. I love that color. Okay, cool. so now what you're gonna do. And it, it might not go right up to the edge, but what you're going to do is take your finger and blend it in a little smoother without messing up those little points you worked so hard on on the petals. Okay. And then you're going to make your way all around the flower. <laughs> Our visiting cat is still here. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're just getting around. Now, you also need to go in between the flowers because that's part of the background too. So even if you have a teeny tiny spot, you still color it the background color. And I'm doing some blending in my finger and I'm making my way around it. This might take me a little while. Okay, well, it might take the artist at home a little while too. So they are working on it. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and everyone's is going to look a little different. So some of you might be at home doing it with a friend or doing it with a sibling. And, you know, I hope that yours look different from each other and that you're making it your own. How are you doing, Molly? Yeah. Okay. And then... So you can see how different it looks to, uh, depending on what color background you pick. But it's the same composition, and you can tell that there's sunflowers in a, in a vase, on a table. Okay. How's it going, Lily? Got to color this one inside part. Now, if you ever feel like you want to touch up an area that you accidentally colored over, you just go get that pastel and just go right back over it. Oh my gosh, we're getting so close to being done. I can't believe it. Just a few more steps away. Just a few more steps away. Color my 
my small inside parts now. Okay, I've got my whole background colored in, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend it a little bit. So I just take my finger and I just blend it in, making sure I don't cover one of my flower petals. Some of you that do art all the time might have a, in some special tools, like a blending stick, which is like a rolled uh, stick of paper that has a point. We use those sometimes, but you know, our fingers just fine today. And while you're waiting, if you see anything that you wanna adjust or touch up, maybe uh, you can do that now. So maybe I'm gonna add some, uh, some more pink leaves or petals up here. Almost done. Oh, go at it, Lily. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, you're just smashing it. Here, want me to help you blend a little? Uh, I'm for okay. now. Okay. Gonna blend a little after. Oh, I got that bit messed up. So I'm gonna go over that at okay. the end after I blend all my stuff together. Oh, you probably push around the rest of your finger. Yeah. You don't have to have your area completely covered. Okay. You just need it mostly covered. Okay. Well, I think they're starting to look real Van Gogh. Mm -hmm. so, I agree. Okay, you're looking great. And if you'd like to, one thing you want to do towards the end is maybe pick a color that'll show up and sign your name in the corner with your whatever your artist signature is. Maybe you uh, like to write your whole name. Maybe you like to write your first name only, and maybe you like initials. But whatever it is, go ahead and, and give us a signature and a quote. Okay. Got to draw the step for this one. Ah. Okay, that looks great. I'm making it more bright. Sorry. Okay, you ready to reveal yours? Yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead and turn around. Oh, ta-da! So this is how our two Van Gogh chalk pastel sunflowers came out. And I hope yours came out, you know, to your satisfaction that you enjoyed this project. If you want to take a photo of your image and uh, tag it with at Art Classes for Kids and then put it on Instagram, maybe we'll get to see it. I hope so. Don't forget to check us out on uh, our YouTube channel where we also have other videos we've made before that are edited with all kinds of funky little sounds and things. We also have our Instagram page and our Pinterest and our, our Facebook and, oh my God, you know, all those socials. So what would you like to tell them, Lily? Oh, and also, we, we're doing uh, uh, also another live stream tomorrow. Oh, what are you making? Uh, for St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, tomorrow is actually the real St. Patrick's Day. And if you're at home, and you want to celebrate, you can make this. Pull it really close to the front. Now, this project that we're doing tomorrow at 4 o'clock is our um, Clover Collage watercolor paint, painting. But if you, uh, you know, if you want to make it, oh, I'm going to tell you what you're going to need to have ready. So you'll need some watercolor paper is best. If you don't have it, just use some white paper or cardstock. But watercolor paper makes it turn out awesome. Then you need some watercolors, paintbrush, paint, and a jar of water, paper towels. And then the special things you'll need are glue sticks, scissors to cut out the watercolor paper. And we have added some gold leafing. 
And this well, one this actually one has silver. Because silver. we have silver and gold. So this one is a silver leaving, but it's more common to have gold. And that you can get at a craft store, but you don't have to use it, you know? And, uh, and a green colored pencil. The silver stuff and gold stuff just adds a little more uh, fancy finish to it. Yeah, it does. So I hope you will join us tomorrow at 4 o'clock to help us celebrate St. Patrick's Day and make something really cool. And what should they keep doing, Lily? Keep making cool art. Thanks for joining us.